this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Amaze 4G for T-Mobile. As you can see, it's a pretty large phone. It's a 4.3 inch display, which is the same as the HTC Sensation, but this phone is actually a little bit bigger than the Sensation and a little bit heavier at 6.1 ounces. It does give you the feeling of, wow, I've got a really big display here. This is capacious for watching videos and stuff, but keep in mind this is a big phone to have in your pocket and to hold in your hand. The curves really help a lot as they do with the Sensation. HTC is very good at ergonomic design to really make phones easier to handle. If you take a look around the side here, you see we've got the white one. This is also available with black, and black would have these sections being black. You still have the silver metal contrasting piece here. And again, it looks a lot like the Sensation, which had a three-piece design back too, only with gray, dark gray, and a kind of brownish section. We've got the big 8-megapixel camera here, and this is using a backlit sensor. This is a really excellent camera. This, from the Jetstream review that we did, you know that HTC has been putting out better cameras recently, and this one also features a very high quality camera. We'll cover in detail in a bit. Got lots of microphones here for noise canceling. This is your speaker right here. Beautiful curves all over. It's a very aesthetically pleasing phone. And it's what's really neat, too. You can see the little black ridge here where the display glass actually comes out over the ridge of the casing which, you know, you might worry about if you drop it flat on its face, but it is Gorilla Glass, so that does help. Here we've got our volume controls. And these buttons here, this is this launches the video camera, this launches the camera, and this also acts to start recording once you're in the video application. And this is the shutter button. There's also an on-screen shutter button as well. This is the release to take off the back door here. Micro USB connection. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the power button. Now if you take off the back, you'll see it's a one-piece back again and really a lot like the Sensation. That comes up pretty easily, thank goodness. HTC sometimes makes complicated designs. And this is a very fancy back here. This has NFC communications built in this phone and it kind of wraps around the edges so you've got this whole naked edge here without any metal framing whatsoever around the inner body of the phone. Interesting design got the SIM card slot over here. Here's your micro SD card slot. It does not come with a card, but there's 16 gigs of internal storage, so well, that's enough to keep you entertained for a while. And this is the 1730 milliamp battery. It also has a 2 megapixel front video chat camera. Obviously, this is your earpiece, and these are your touch control buttons. And you can see it's running HTC Sense 3.0, again, like the Sensation and other recent HTC phones. Same experience there. If you like Sense, you're going to love this. If you don't like Sense, well, nothing's going to help you. You can see they have their usual customization of the applications. These are all applications. You can have favorite apps, tap the star, and you'll see ones that are your favorites. And if you just want to see ones that you've downloaded, you tap over there. Home screen gives you usual HTC clock and weather widgets and their cute little 3D kind of effect if you go really fast. If you press and hold the home button, you have your shortcut to running apps. And if you press quickly, you can get to all the screens at once. And it's more to HTC Sense than just this. There's also their friend stream, social networking, and a lot of other cool apps that I find quite enjoyable. The phone runs Android OS 2.3.4 Gingerbread. That's currently the latest. It has a 1.5 GHz Qualcomm dual core CPU. That's the latest generation of Snapdragon CPU. And the phone is very fast. It scores about 2735 on quadrant, so just a little bit slower than the. Galaxy S2 on T-Mobile, which is funny because they're using the exact same CPU, but we're talking about a, a difference of 100 points in the score, so it, that's not exactly hugely significant. Let's compare it to the Samsung Galaxy S2 on T-Mobile, another absolutely huge phone. They're both big phones, but this guy has a 4.52 inch display, so a little bit bigger display than that, a reason for it to be so big. And they have nearly identical features, both of that 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU NFC and the 4G HSPA Plus 42 meg per second. The Galaxy S2 is $229 with a contract, so it is a little bit cheaper, but you know, $30 bucks is not that significant over the life of a two-year contract, so pick the one that you like the best. And it's not an easy, easy choice, folks. They're both fairly slim phones. Of course, Samsung always makes the skinniest phones. Samsung is a bit more plasticky, you know, that's how Samsung rolls. Although we like this iteration the best, it looks the least plasticky, and we like the curved edges that they put on the phone. 
Samsung, of course, has a Super AMOLED Plus display for super rich and vibrant colors, but you can see here that the Super LCD display on the HTC is really holding its own. It also looks quite good without the maybe ultra-vivid colors, but it's good. And this is a higher resolution display on the HTC. It's QHD 960 by 40, 540 pixels versus the standard 800 by 480 on the Samsung. The phone has 16 gigs of internal storage. Obviously, you can expand it with a micro SD card slot. And it has the usual Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a GPS. Phone costs $259 with contract after a $50 rebate. And now we're, we're going up above the usual $199 for the high-end Android Superphone pricing here. And we're assuming that, besides the fact that T-Mobile probably could use a little bit more money, that they're seeing if they can do this because Verizon's been doing this with their 4G LTE phones and you're paying maybe a little bit of a premium because it has faster networking because this guy has 4G HSPA plus 42 meg per second. Now that's a theoretical maximum download speed. You're not going to get 42, but still, that's the first 4G HSPA plus technology we've seen that kind of starts to approach LTE for performance. With LTE, we've been seeing about 16 to 18 megs down on Verizon, and with AT&T, the HTC Jetstream, which is currently their only LTE product other than um, access points, we saw about up to 22 or so. Now, on this, we've been getting about 10 megs down, which is pretty impressive. Upload speeds have not been that good. I think there's a network issue going on right now because both our Galaxy S2 and this are showing strangely so upload speeds, which isn't the norm. But for now, say that 10 megs down is pretty darn fast, and if you're using the mobile hotspot feature on this, you can have no problem serving two clients at once. That means two laptops or two tablets using that connection simultaneously. Now let's take a look at the camera software, because there are plenty of features there, and as we said, that 8 megapixel shooter is very good. You can also shoot 1080p video at 30 fifths. So now you can see we're taking a nice picture of our Galaxy S2 right there. We've got access to the last picture that we've taken, and... For shooting modes, we have an interesting selection. There's auto over here, and these are all kind of graphically pretty. Smart shot, and they say this is useful for group shots, and it tries to use smile detection to make sure everybody's smiling. You've got sweeping panorama modes, clear shot HDR, something we've seen on the iPhone as well, and it's pretty effective to dealing with high contrast situations. And a variety of sports modes, burst shots, night shots, macro shots, and this takes really nice macro pictures, and portrait mode. And we've got flash control here. You can switch between the back and front cameras, between camera and video, and if you want even more settings, there's a self-timer effects, ISO, you can change the resolution, you can set whether or not it's widescreen, wide uh, review duration, geotagging, auto-enhancing photos, auto-focus, on or off. I don't know why you would want to turn that off, but you can turn your shutter sound off and lots more stuff. And if we switch to video mode, you can see we have fewer settings available to us, but we still have white balance effects. And whether or not we want to record with audio, whether we want stereo audio recording. So it's a pretty capable camera, really takes nice video and nice photos. It certainly holds its own against the Galaxy S2, which is also an excellent imaging phone. The Snapdragon CPU is particularly good at 2D graphics, i.e. video playback, and it can play 1080p high-profile video, which is something a lot of phones can't, and it, it does a bit better job than the Tegra 2. So let's take a look at some video in gallery. And we're going to actually play a 1080p high-profile video trailer, MPEG-4. And we'll scoot ahead to The speaker's pretty good on it too, as you can hear. Fairly clear and full. HTC speakers have been weak, but this is good. That's 1080p high-profile. Wow. Very nice and really smooth. It's a good screen, natural and warm. So clearly, 1080p playback of locally stored content, not a problem. If you want to plug it into your TV, 
to play back 1080p, which makes a lot more sense than playing it on a resolution, small resolution display like this. You've got HTC's little combo connector here that this is both micro USB and it works with their MHL adapter, which is about 20 bucks at a T-Mobile store. And that will give you a full-size HDMI port so you can plug into your TV or your monitor or your projector. We've also got T-Mobile TV on here, which they now call T-Mobile TV HD. And that's a pay-for service powered by Moby TV. And this streams content over the network. There's actually some free channels available now that you don't have to pay for. The lip sync seems to be a little bit off here, but it's looking good. It's funny, usually T-Mobile TV doesn't have lip sync issues. Then there was this plastic bag that represented my dad. Sounds like you could use a little R&R, rum and Ritalin. Since the phone isn't released yet, they're probably also tweaking their service a bit before launch. But that's T-Mobile TV. And of course you can do Adobe Flash. We're up to Adobe Flash Player 11 right now for Android. And here we are on our website and you can see that it scrolls very smoothly. We've got Flash ads actually running here too and it's not slowing it down any. Pinch zooming is working just great. And we'll take a look at one of our own video reviews in Flash format rather than mobile. Of course you can use the mobile YouTube format and that's quite good too in terms of quality. And you can see that the page remains fairly controllable while Flash is loading. Which means it has a pretty capable CPU. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the HP EliteBook 2760P Windows Tablet PC. And here we've got it popped out to full screen, 480p, and once again you can hear that speaker is loud. We're going to turn it down a little bit. That works just fine. One thing I noticed is the phone gets quite warm when it's playing Adobe Flash. It's something that really works the CPU, particularly the metal parts in the frame. You can feel that you're not going to burn your hand or something like that, but it does get warm. Call quality on the phone is quite good. Clear, distinct voice and loud, full speaker. And reception is average for a T-Mobile phone. In fact, it's pretty much like the sensation if you've had that. And also not so far off from the Vibrant. Speaking of the Vibrant, if you've still got one of those and you're looking to upgrade and you're not in love with TouchWiz and Super AMOLED displays, this is certainly a nice step up, or the Galaxy S2 also is. But if you've got a sensation, mm, not so much. Yeah, you do get faster theoretical network speeds and a somewhat better camera, but is that worth an out-of-contract upgrade that's going to cost you probably around $600? Not as much. Of course, up to you and how you want to spend your money. GPS on the phone works just fine. It comes with Google Maps and navigation. And you also get Telenav GPS Navigator if for some reason Google Maps and Navigation don't float your boat. That's a pay-for service, about $10 a month for Telenav GPS, and it's, it gives very good spoken turn-by-turn -turn directions. Quick video chat's preloaded for the front video chat camera. That, that works okay. Quick isn't right up there with Skype in terms of video quality. You can download and install Skype on the phone though, as well. T-Mobile doesn't load too much bloatware on this. They're usually very good about that. You do get their T-Mobile mall buying apps, T-Mobile name ID or caller ID. They're obviously their T-Mobile TV. They put Slacker Radio on there. We've got the quick shortcut to the Wi-Fi hotspot feature if you want to use this phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot. We've got Lookout Security preloaded and the usual HTC stuff like HTC Hub, Peep, their friend stream social networking and more. You also get Polaris Office on here. That's what HTC has been bundling lately for an office suite. And you see you can create Word or Excel documents. And you can also view them as well. And there's the interface right there. And you can use it in landscape mode. You can use it with a Bluetooth keyboard if you want it. And if you press the menu button, you can see options here. Not as full featured as the tablet version, but certainly good enough to get you going. 
And if you don't like Polaris Office, there are other Office Suites available for download on the Android market, generally between $15 and $30. That's the HTC Amaze 4G. It's going to be available on T-Mobile October 12th for $259 with a two-year contract after a $50 rebate. This is one of T-Mobile's latest super phones, along with the Samsung Galaxy S2. We're going to have a video review of that as well, and we're going to do a smackdown between the two phones if you're having trouble deciding. Certainly it's a nice high-end phone. Why are you paying more for this than, than other T-Mobile high-end phones or even the Galaxy S2? Well, you're, you're paying for the, the, the fancy camera with the backlit sensor and the HDR feature and for a pretty high-end build aesthetic here with some use of metal and nice materials and, generally speaking, a very styling, high-quality looking phone that, that's a bit more impressive looking than some of the more plasticky phones that are on the market. We like the QHD Super LCD display, really sharp, colorful, bright, and natural looking too, which is a pleasure when you're watching movies. Camera is really, really very good on this. Data speeds, if you're in HSPA plus 42 market, well, you'll be getting about 10 megs down. You might even get a bit more, and if you're not, you'll probably see somewhere between 3 and 6 megs down, which is not bad at all. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.